Former President Olusegun Obasanjo speaks again, and this time it is to the youth. And will allowing citizens to legally carry weapons solve the insecurity problem? This is PLOS Politics, and I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Welcome back. Former President Tolushigo Obasanjo has spoken again, and this time he has asked African youth to dislodge the older generation from leadership positions. Obasanjo enjoined the youth to participate actively in the activities of uh, political parties with a view to taking over the structure from them. The former president said this while marking this year's International Youth Day. Similarly, the governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, while marking the same celebration, stated that the leaders of the country have failed the coming generation, saying that equality and fairness have not been institutionalized in the country. Joining us to discuss this is Dikpo Layuku and David Hundeng, both journalists. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. All right, I'm going to start with um, uh, David. Um, I would uh, start the conversation with you this evening. What do you think the former president meant by active participation? Uh, sorry, uh, could you just uh, repeat the question again? Uh, I'm asking, what do you think former president Olusha Gorbasanjo meant when he uh, uh, said active participation? Right. Um, the the of which is basically the majority of both the bottom population and population of Nigeria statistically. Unfortunately, in this it doesn't seem to be very um, uh, clear uh, from your end. Okay, so so we're gonna we're gonna um, move to Mr. Dikpo and see if we can uh, get. Um, uh, you uh, started while we try and reconnect with uh, David. Uh, Dick, well, let, let's have you uh, speak about that. What do you think former President Olusegun uh, Basanjo meant when he said um, active participation? Yeah, th thank you very much. I think uh, if I'm going to put myself in his mind, and which is, uh, I think it's uh, what everybody is talking about, they should involve themselves in all the processes that leads to election and post-election. How do I mean? When you're talking of politics or getting involved in governance, it has to do with the process of electioneering, taking part in the election in terms of campaigns, in terms of uh, obtaining nomination forms, putting youths forward as candidates in elections. And then on the day of election, youth will go out to vote and also ensure that their votes count. And after that, when they found themselves in government, then they should be involved in governance. Hitherto, it has been established that in terms of population or number, the youth form the bulk of the population in a country. And we are talking about uh, the population involving the elders and then the things. But interestingly, it's like our youths have not taken advantage of this their huge population. The youths are the ones that are involved in campaigning for the leaders who are very old, if I go with according to the old leaders. The youths are the ones that were involved in their campaigns. When it comes to the issue of elections, the youths will not go, they go out to vote for these old leaders. And when it's time to engage in electoral mark practices, the older ones will not go and smash ballot papers. They will still use the youth. The old ones will not go and machete, carrying up, going about with machete and stuff like that, disrupting elections, election rigging. They will still use the youth. So I think what the former president was trying to tell the youth is this their involvement in politics, they should use it to their own advantage by coming forward as candidates, and then make sure that the youth vote massively for this, the youths that are coming out. 
I, I think that's exactly what the, 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 the former president was trying to say. Wow. And even when you eventually found themselves in government, the youth should also be involved in making sure that those youth they have sent into government are doing the right thing. I, I think that is exactly what the former president was trying to say. I, I want Instead you to... The youth I want you to... In all forms of malpractices, yeah. uh, helping the old leaders... Will remain in office. All right. I, I want you to speak on while well, we're trying to connect with uh, or reconnect with David. I want you to speak on where you feel the disconnect um, is with Nigerian youth, um, because, like you said, you know we have a large you know population of of young people in the country. They get active when it comes to being used for you know the negative aspects of electioneering, but they never get active with the with the, you know what's the most important. So where do you think the, the greatest disconnect is with the level of interest Nigerian youth have um, in politics? Okay. For example, let us uh, look at it from this perspective. On the day of elections, the youth who are not engaged in electoral malpractices, what do they do? You will see them, you know, because in, 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 in Nigeria, on the day of elections, every other thing is paralyzed. No movement no economic activities, everybody is geared towards voting. But interestingly, you see these youths, they convert our roads into a football pitch, and they, you see them in large numbers playing football on the day of election. That is those who are not engaged in electoral malpractices. So this, has a, this is exactly where the problem lies. I, I, I think the youths are somehow disenchanted with the system that we operate. An average Nigerian youth on the day of election, instead of engaging election and uh, voting, they go into other things. For example, look at the issue of, uh, let us just look at this as an example, the issue of sports and football. An average Nigerian youth is more affiliated to sports, especially football, than politics. To him, when you are discussing politics and you are discussing, you are discussing football, he would rather show more interest in discussing football than in politics. So that means they are disenchanted. They don't know the value of All the right. strength that they have. All right, I'm, I'm going to... These gonna... leaders of yesterday yeah. that have become the heroes of yesterday, Chibaba Femi Awolowo, Inam Diazipwe, Abad Makoli, and the, and the likes, they started their political activities as youth. But unfortunately, our, they, our youth don't see politics as something they should involve in. They see government as, oh, the government is belong to them now. They are the ones that should be practicing government. And there, has, there, has, to be a, there has, has to be a involved. reason why this so that is... That is the irony. Yes. And that is the problem. So, so I, I want to welcome back uh, to David Udeni. Um, thanks for joining us once again. Yes. All right. So I, I'm sure you've been listening. I, I want to know what you think is the reason for this disconnect. Um, you are, um, you spend a lot of time online, um, um, engaging with young people, um, getting to you know interact with them a lot. So you should have an idea w the way that they think and why they don't seem to be very interested in this process. Um, and then I, I, want, I want you to quickly speak on that. And then also um, the call of the former president uh, to youth to dislodge older generation from uh, leadership positions. Would you see this as a call to violence, assuming that these leaders are not willing to even give up power? So uh, in answer to the first question, it, like, from, from my point of view, from my perspective, after engaging with young Nigerians over an extended period of time, the issue with political engagement in the youth demographic seems to be that young Nigerians don't really understand that everything, pretty much everything that is wrong or right with Nigeria as they know it, is a function of politics. People have this idea that politics is something that some people do in Abuja or in some places very distant from them. They don't understand that the reason why you know you go out to ask if someone has someone call the ticket for you and you pretend to that that person. That the reason why the price of dropping a market goes up six and five percent than did last week. All right. Um uh, apologies uh, for that. Um, we're going to have to, of course, once again go back to Dikpo Olayoku. Um, I, I want you to speak on, you know, the same question. I'm asking um, leaders, of course, are not going to just hand over power. Um, so, do you feel that this call from the former president is maybe a call to violence or a call to, um, you know, forcefully take over power from these, you know, leaders in power currently? No, no, I, I, don't see it, I don't see it from that perspective. One, 
Chief Olisha Kumar Sanjoy, by virtue of his age and the offices he had occupied before, would not at this age be calling for violence. I think what the man was trying to tell the youths, and they should take up the responsibility that has been given to them. Let us take about Chief Olisha Kumar as an example. Yeah. The man started to be in governance right from the early 30s. Former, as a former commissioner for works under a military regime of uh, Dr. General Yakubu Gowon. Later, he became a head of state, and that was around 39 years old. So he would not be, he, he realizes, he has most realized the fact that the youth has what it takes to be involved in politics. But unfortunately, just like uh, David said, and which I said earlier, the youth of today see government, government as something that is meant for those people, those old people. That is the irony. And I think that's a, uh, the, uh, that means our educational structure is faulty. Because we have uh, civic education. Some people will use uh, social sciences when we were in primary secondary school. These are things that they should have taught our children of today. Yeah. But unfortunately, we are only producing them to go and start working in the office or uh, start to do certain things. Nobody is preparing them for governance. That is where, where the issue of mentorship comes in. And that is very, very key. Nobody has been able to impress it on the, on the youth of today. Yes, we always say today's uh, tomorrow, they are the leaders of tomorrow. But unfortunately, we don't let them know that by being the leaders of tomorrow, they should be involved in politics. It is very, very germane. Because, like you said, Power is not served a la carte, as, a la carte, as some people will say. Nobody will hand over power to you. You must take it, not by force, but by being involved. But at the same time, there is a need for us to understand one predicament of the youth. The Nigerian politics, just like any other politics all over the world, is heavily monetized. That is one key factor, which I think is the, what is discouraging our youth from being involved in politics. Our politics is heavily monetized. And unfortunately, because of the social structure that we have, many of the youths that we have today are still struggling to make ends meet. So it will be very difficult for them to have enough or to also have um, surplus that they would devote, they, they would, they would they deploy into politics. And unfortunately, the owners of the political arena, the so-called godfather, will not have much confidence in the youth so as to push them forward to say, okay, I'm going to back you go and contest for this position. They would rather go for the people that they are, they are used to. They have been doing it for the past 50 years. Like what happened when Chibasanjo was coming out in 1999. The first poster that they posted, there wasn't any political party there. There wasn't any message there. They only put his message in his picture and said, the man we can trust. That was the first poster that they posted all over the country in 1999. So the godfathers, I mean, those who have the liquid, the money, to deploy it into politics, they would rather look for somebody they have been dealing with for the past 50, 25 years, instead of looking for a, a, a youth who does not even show any interest. So there's need for us to understand the predicament of the youth. But at the same time, I still, if the youth knows what, it, what they have, the power of the population, they can come together and form a political party that will not need much money to contest or to, to spread around for people to vote, to vote for you. But unfortunately, our youth are not being, they were not taught. And that is where I want to repeat again, the area of mentorship. Nobody really mentored them to know that they, when you say you are the leaders of tomorrow, it means that you must come out and take part in politics. I think that is very, very key. There's a need for us to change our focus in the area of mentorship, to prepare them for, for tomorrow. Do, for you, today, for do, you, do, do you believe, because we're- We read in the history, we're eventually going to speak about um, what they can do because, you know, from what you've described, it doesn't seem like there's any um, a, 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 any place where they can win. If, you know, we are looking at how expensive it is to run for election in Nigeria today, the young people in the country cannot afford that. So we'd eventually get there. But I, I, I want you to also speak about the mentality. Earlier, you referred to the um, Olushigo Basanjo and the leaders uh, back then who were also young people when they took over leadership, um, the mentality then was different. Do you think that the youth of today have the mentality for leadership if they were given those positions? Because some people would argue that most of the people who are outside leadership are only just looking for their own chance to squander and looking for their own chance at the national cake. So do you feel that the young people in Nigeria today 
are even interested in leadership or have the mentality to be able to fix what needs to be fixed in the country? If we have a crop of youth today that don't have interest in what becomes of governance in Nigeria, then that means we have failed. Because we are the, we are the one that will have mentored them to know that, yes, when you're talking of governance, we are going to hand over to you. It means that just like where Professor Wale Shinka said, our generation is a wasted generation because we are the one that will have touched them this, that we are going to hand over this country to you people. And then let us ask ourselves, uh, my dear brother, why is it that the children of people that have been in government are also in government today? Because their fathers mentored them in that direction. That, okay, if we leave tomorrow, you guys will take over. And it, it should have been a general mentorship not a mentorship that is restricted to a family, where the family will continue to rule over the same set of people and some people will continue to be subservient to them. But there should have been a system in place, like our, like our education, educational structure, will have been structured in such a way that we'll have a place where we would call mentor mentorship to prepare our children for tomorrow. When you say you are the leader of tomorrow, how are we preparing them to take up this man, the leadership mantle? No, but we are not doing that. Instead, we are just mounting it. Nobody is putting it to, into action. And that is a failure on our part. But again, I think this is where the use of today, now we have to wake up. Many of them are experts in computer or internet services. Many of them acquire this knowledge on their own. So that is why it is very necessary for them to know by, by listening to or watching this kind of a program, listening to other programs on radio, that these people, the old people we are complaining about, will not live voluntarily until we use the strength of the youth in terms of population to get them out of office. I think that is the message that Jefferson Joe was trying to send to these children. You have the population. You have the vigor. Many of the things you are doing for, to make sure that these old people get into office, why don't you deploy this thing to your own, to your own category or your own class of children, citizens so that you people will take over? So I, I think, uh, yes, the mentality might not be there in the first instance. The training will not be there in the first instance. But there's the need for them to now wake up and know that this thing falls on them. The youth are always complaining. They will come the to the generation, they are wasting our own tomorrow. But you cannot just sit down and allow them to waste your tomorrow. That is why it is very necessary for them to use this kind of a program, which you guys are doing now, to let them know that you people you must be you take up the responsibility. But unfortunately, there's a need for us to be very truthful to ourselves. How many youth watch television today to listen to this kind of a program? Instead, if they are not watching football, they are watching BB Niger, and things that are not of benefit to them, especially in terms of their future. If, you, if it is possible for us to take a population of two youth that are watching this program today, you'll be amazed. Even if by mistake they tune into this television station or this kind of play program, they would rather go for uh, some television where they are playing music, where they are playing football, or BB Niger. So it, it, the problem of the youth is multifaceted, and uh, it's only God that can help us. And at the same time, there's a need for the very few ones that are watching the program, that have taken it upon themselves to make sure that they chart a course for themselves, the future for the country. There's a need for them to spread this message among their, among their, their, their peers. So do, do you, um, Dikpo um, Olayoko, I, I want to know if you feel, um, because there's a lot that we've also mentioned. Um, there's, of course, the saying that power is not served a la carte. It must be earned. It must be taken. Um, there are certain factors, of course, that we've realized will make it very, very difficult for the youth to get, you know, that far with power taken. Uh, the cost of running for office is, is one of the things that you've also mentioned. Um, we will talk about, you know, what do you feel would be the um, best answer, you know, to conquer some of these, you know, really expensive factors. Um, but there's one other thing that I believe is a huge fear that the young people have, and that is the system. Uh, the fact that they don't think they can they can beat the system, they can win you know against the system, no matter how many no, you know their numbers are, they feel like the system has been rigged you know so bad that it would be difficult to even get a young person. Do you think that that can be be defeated also? It can it can be defeated as we speak today. The speaker of your state house of assembly is below thirty. I think the guy is about twenty eight years old. If he didn't contest the election, he would have won. As we speak today, one of the commissioners in Kuala State is about 26 years old or 25. What I'm saying is that the youth can use their figure, their, their population. How do I mean? While the big parties are charging exorbitant fees as nomination fees, 
there are some small parties that will cost more small parties that you give their nomination forms just like for free. So the, our youth can take advantage of some of these so-called small, small parties. We can begin from the House of Assembly all over the country. Maybe I'll say the youth in the state who say, okay, on our own, we want to capture 50% of the House of Assembly seat in our state. Then from there, they can graduate into, okay, we now go into House of Representatives. The other time, the, this guy, this singer, this, uh, this musician, I think uh, Banky W, I think my memory is having me right, came out to contest on the platform of one party. Do you think if the youth in that local, in that uh, constituency, federal constituency, had rally run this him, had rally that him, do you think he wouldn't have won the election? So these are the things we are talking about. We have some youth that have taken up the gauntlet, that have taken up the challenge. So I'm going to present myself. But unfortunately, you have, you have our youth, even on the day of election, the very, the very few of them that go out to vote will still vote for this old leader we are complaining about. So there are so many areas where the youth can take advantage of their population, where they can penetrate into the area of governance. Like I just said, told you, the man who is the speaker of your state of Assembly, or your state, if I don't hear, is a very young guy. So, uh, so it, it is possible for the youth to take advantage. They, are, they shouldn't be behind all these big, big parties. We are the nomination for, for we are the nomination fees are very huge. There are some small, small parties, so-called small parties, that have their nomination fee very, very small, very something they can afford. Some of them even give them out for free. So these are the areas. The youth should not be looking at oh, we have to team up with the so-called big parties before we can make our mark. It will be very, very difficult for you. Let us take advantage of the little areas where we are. Let us start our taking over from there. Then before you know it, if you have 50% of the youth taking over the Bauchi and House of Assembly, you have 50% of the youth taking over the House of Assembly in uh, Cross River. Gradually, they are going into the national. And before you know it, they have taken over all over. And I, from, the, and from there, you re, let, let me use the, let me be decor, uh, decor. You, you, you retire the old leaders all so right. that they cannot continue in office. And they are not ready to leave. They're not preparing the youth. So what happens when they go? I was talking about they're going to, they're going to be a lacuna. All you right. should avoid it. Thank you. And that is why the youth should be spoken to, to talk to today. They need to take up the responsibility. They have what it takes. They have the population. They have the agility. If they lack money, they can use their brain. What rules the world? Ideas. Rule the world. Then they have the ideas. They can use the ideas to win this election. All right. Thank you very much. Don't just go to these big parties that will say nomination from nomination fee is 45 million naira. Something, something, the intent of something is 50 million naira. Go to the small parties. Push your feet, like huge population into that party. And then you, before you know it, you are taking over governance. Thank without you very any much. Violence. And I think that's what it's about today's first time. Nick Ayoko, thank you so much for, for sharing with us. Um, it's a conversation that I believe can last for, for days. Um, but thanks once again, and it's we always, hope to speak with you again. It's always a pleasure. God bless you. And now we have uh, joining us uh, Michael Amosu, who is a youth leader at the Obafemiya Wello University. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Michael. I know you're talking. I'm not getting so clear. Tell me. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll, uh, of course, we'll try to reconnect with him. Stay with us, Plus Politics, um, all the way.